What's going on guys? Kirk here from Motogear TV. Thank you guys for tuning in once again. As you guys can tell from the title of the video, we're here to do an install and review of the Babson Revenant Pro Amplifier. Let's get started. So before we get started, just wanted to give you some quick stats on the Revenant Pro Amplifier. This one is their new redesign. It produces 1600 watts of output power. This is about 24% more than their original Revenant Amplifier. The design is a little bit different as well. From what I can tell from the old pictures, this version seems a little bit longer. Really curious to seeing exactly how this performs, especially compared to the stock system. Again, Bath Sound does say that it is a plug and play setup. Shouldn't be too hard to install. They said about 30 to 60 60 minutes so once we get in we're gonna see how long it's gonna take obviously because we're filming it's gonna take a little bit longer it should be pretty straightforward we did get a few things to go ahead to do the install bath sound was kind enough to provide us their install toolkit gives you all the necessary tools so it should make this job so much easier and on top of that it does come with some additional hardware this is their bracket that's going to hold the amplifier into place and on top of that they also provided us with some wiring hardware which is going to be necessary to plug it in now before we go ahead and do the installation i think we should at least do a sound comparison with the stock system so let's hear it out all right so we're in the car right now just thought i'd give you guys just a comparison of what the stock sound system sounds like with the stock amplifier and then later on in the video we're going to be comparing how the revenant amplifier sounds with the stock harman cardon system so this is about 50 percent right now is 75% right now. One of the things I really noticed, especially with the sock system, is that especially for the type of music that I listen to, I often find myself having to turn the volume up a little bit more than usual, mainly anywhere between 60 to 75 percent, just to hear a good punch. To me, it seems that like the sock system is overexerting itself, so I'm very interested into seeing how the bath sound amplifier is going to compare and if my listening volume is going to be lower than it, how it used to be. All right, so we're gonna start off by removing this plastic cover. It's actually held in by four clips, two on each side. To do so, we're gonna be using clip removal tool from the toolkit. Flathead is also necessary. I'm gonna lift it up. And pretty much all four are gonna look like this. Now this is gonna feel like it has some resistance. It's actually held in through some little channels in the rubber seal. Just gonna have to take your time and wiggle it out. Okay, like that. All right, next up, you're gonna have to remove this compartment that holds the amplifier into place. To do so, you're gonna have to lower your rear seat. And then there's gonna be a few clips that are gonna hold it into place. One right here with this hook, another one which is underneath here, and then right there, which is gonna be the hook for your cargo nets. All right, that's one. All right, next up, we're gonna to have to remove this bolt. Now this bolt actually holds the cargo net hook into place. To do so, we're gonna use a T40 Torx, which is also provided in the kit. 
So we're gonna go ahead and remove this liner. Definitely wanna take your time because the cigarette lighter outlet is still plugged in. Now, before we get too far, you just wanna go ahead and disconnect this. Simply just pull it out. Then you can go ahead and remove. All right, so here you guys have the stock Harmon Cardon amplifier. It's actually held in place by a 10 mil nut. Pretty easy to remove. It's gonna be right here on this side. All you need to do is remove the nut, slide the amp forward and remove it. Like that. And then you're gonna lift the entire plate out. Be very careful. There's also an eight mil bolt that holds the amp to the base of the bracket. So you're gonna remove this and then take the amplifier out. All right, so next up, we're gonna take the amp off of the bracket. To do so, we're just gonna to have to slide it up and out. Once that's loose, you're gonna remove this wiring harness from the stock amp itself. It's actually held in by this clip. You need to depress it down, slide the tab all the way in and then pull it out. Now that we have the stock amp out, we're gonna compare it to the Revenant amp. All right, so we're here day two for the install. We lost a little bit of light yesterday, so we're gonna continue it when it's a little bit brighter. Just wanted to focus right now on the amp. We have everything pretty much plugged in, but I did wanna at least run through what we have for the setup. As you guys can see, we have the input and output connectors plugged in. We also have our power and ground cable plugged in as well. Before we go ahead and put it back into the car, there are a few things I just wanted to highlight. First thing is going to be the auto sense. You want to make sure that it's set to the off position. As you guys can see right here, we have the Bath Sound Tune Card. Now, pay specific attention to this. When you're inserting the tune card, you wanna make sure that the arrows are pointing up. Just as a reference, this is what the tune card is gonna look like from the outside. Again, always wanting to make sure that the arrows are pointing up. And when you do insert it, make sure that this little hole is still visible. All right, next up on the back of the amp, we're gonna have our profile set up. Now this one is very important because it's gonna determine if you want to have the amp more driver focused or you want to have a multi-seat function. What I mean by that is basically the amp is gonna adjust itself depending on what setup you have, depending if you have stock speakers or the bath sound speakers. Obviously for right now, we have the stock speakers in the car with the upgraded amp. So we're gonna set it to profile four because I wanted to have a multi-seat function. And this is all available on the little pamphlet that they included. And the last thing I wanted to go over is this channel bridge button. For the purposes of this vehicle specifically, we want to have it set to channel 8. So if it's depressed in like this, you want to make sure that it's pressed out. And now that we have everything run through, we're going to go ahead and show you how we're going to be mounting the power and the ground cable. Also how I'm going to be routing this into the car. All right, so, so before we go ahead and put the amp back in, let me just show you exactly where the power cable is supposed to go. Now, specifically for this car, it's going to have a accessory port that's going to be located right beside the terminal. This is going to be for your positive. It's usually held in with a red cap. Simply pop it off. This is going to be a 10 mil nut. You're going to have to screw it off and then you're going to screw on the power cable to this. For your ground, however, it's going to be a little bit different as this one is going to bolt into the body of the car located at this point right here you guys can kind of see for the purposes of routing the cable i'm most likely going to follow where the stock wiring harness is going along the car to the back and then bringing it right back out to here luckily enough the power cable is long enough so we can adjust it as we want So now we're gonna go ahead and assemble the amp into the car. First thing we're gonna have to do is to hook it up back to the stock bracket. This one, you're gonna basically line this mounting point up with this point, have to slide it in. Easiest way to know if it's in properly is if these hooks line up, obviously this one isn't. So I'm gonna have to adjust it now. So once you have all four points lined up, you can go ahead and screw this in. And this one is held in by eight millimeter bolt. All right, next up, we're gonna connect our factory connector harness to the valve sound input and output connectors. It's pretty straightforward. The input and output is gonna to go to the main harness located to the left, and this is gonna be your black connector. So to line it up, you just have to make sure that the pins line up with each other. This tab has to be face down. 
Once it's pushed in, you're gonna slide it back, wait till you hear the click, and that one's in. Okay, next up, we're gonna be connecting the Active Sound Design connector to our Bav Sound Active Sound Design harness. Now, this is intended for cars that do have Active Sound Design. It's just a bypass to work with the amp. This connector is gonna be the gray connector. And again, same process as the main wiring harness. You're gonna plug it in, pull the tab back, hear the click, and obviously make sure that your Active Sound Design harness is plugged into the secondary amp. Now with the amp connected to all of the factory wiring harnesses, we're gonna go ahead and set the bracket back into the stock location. Specifically, this mounting point has to clear along with other four mounting points. Once everything is lined up, you're gonna pull it back. And then we're gonna go ahead and screw back in the nuts that's gonna hold the bracket into place. And now we're gonna go ahead and route this power cable. Again, just gonna be following the factory harness to the battery mounting points. Okay, so the power cable is routed, everything is connected. I did go ahead and clean up a couple of the cables with some zip ties, tying it down to the factory harness. I'm probably going to add one more right here. After that, the final part is going to be to install this 100 amp fuse. The last and most important step is going to be to add this 100 amp fuse. Now this should be the last step in your installation process as recommended by Valve Sound just to make sure that there's no shorting. This is a pretty large fuse so you don't want this to get damaged. So that's why this is the last process for this step. You're going to make sure to insert it inside these metal prongs in the center. Push it down. Once it snaps into place, cap it off. And now with everything installed, I think we should go ahead and test it out. All right, so right now we're gonna go ahead and test out the new amp with the stock system. We're gonna be using the same two songs that I did with the first stock amp. Just to give you guys a good comparison, we're gonna be doing the same volume levels as well. First one is gonna be at 50%, and then the second one is gonna be at around 60 to 75%. Really hoping that it gives a noticeable difference, so let's see how it is. So already, even at 50%, it's way better than the stock system was. The highs and the lows definitely sound more pronounced. And I'm really liking it so far. It definitely seems like it gives the stock speakers that additional punch. So right now, I think I'm going to go ahead and play the second song just so you guys can have the comparison. This one's at 50%. Five percent. Yeah, this goes hard. And there you guys have it. Even at fifty percent, it still sounds way more powerful than the Harman Kardon stock amp did. Again, really impressed with how it turned out. Bav Sound, once again, thank you for creating an awesome product. Really impressed with how it is right now. Now, I will say with the increased output of the stock speakers, the stock sub does sound a little bit underwhelming. So I think for the next install, we're gonna go ahead and install their Ghost subwoofer. 
so again if you guys are interested in seeing the installation for that and also all the previous videos we've done so far make sure you guys go ahead and subscribe to the channel stay tuned for more geared up content and once again big shout out to bav sound we're going to be continuing the installation process with all of their pieces and most likely by the time we're finished with the entire install this system is going to sound like no other i hope you enjoyed this install stay tuned for the next one and until then we're gone